Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Wanda Barrero. I'm the Client Success Manager here at PDS. For today's topic, we'll be sharing how to maximize revenue performance with PDS Denial Analytics. And joining me today is Russell Hendrickson, the CEO of PDS. Good afternoon, everyone, or good morning, depending upon what time zone you're in, and thank you for joining us. It's great to have you here today. Um, For those of you who are not familiar with Practical Data Solutions, for over 20 years, we've been working with clients to deliver data-driven solutions to get data out of their systems and make it visual and actionable to help them manage the information that they need in order to make good business decisions. And today's webinar is really part of a series we started in uh, January this year. Um, The first one in January was on Medicare's impact and ensuring revenue integrity. And then in February, we took a look at how to use uh, and maximize your recovery from denials. Um, Today's webinar is really understanding the PDS Denials Analytics product and how it can help you with performance improvement. And I do encourage you, if you didn't see either of the webinars we did in January or February, They're available on our website, but you can also see them on our YouTube channel, which is available through our website or directly on YouTube at PDS Healthcare. And I I do encourage you, given today's topic, um, if you didn't get to see them, I I think you'll get a lot out of how to use these tools and why, where today we're going to be talking more about the tools and the way they deliver analytics. And let's dig in today's topic where we'll discuss restructuring denials analyzing problems, understanding payments, as well as opportunity costs. Um, So, Russell, where do we start? So, if you think about visual dashboards, in January we looked at revenue integrity type web-based dashboards that look at things like coding levels, office visits, AR, of course, denials, and, you know, that was a good starting point of a general, you know, what's going on with revenue in an organization. Then when we started to focus in on denials, which is where we're going to focus today, you know, it's easy enough to move around your dashboards to refocus the user on potentially your denial rates. But to really understand the importance of denials today, we need to look back at what's happened in 2020 and 2021. In particular, in 2020, we started to see telehealth services were covered by Medicare and many of the other payers in part of social distancing and trying to keep uh, everybody safe. And then in January of 2021, we had CMS uh, enacted significant increases to work RVUs, as well as significant changes to the calculations for uh, RVUs in terms of reimbursement. And luckily, at the last minute, they um, reduced the payment uh, just to just 4% on the non-E&M codes, where originally it was slated to be almost 11%. And of course, they also changed some significant coding rules. And COVID um, had a direct impact on denials because of the changes in the way patients were being treated. So when you think about all those changes that CMS has enacted, in addition to then, you know, we have patients no longer being seen in the practice, you know, getting the right information from patients, you know, potentially if you're doing a a phone call. Uh, We had a lot of uh, people becoming unemployed, changing insurance. We had some of the other carriers started to approve telehealth services. And then staffing in general, many organizations had staff turnover, had people getting sick, had new uh, folks coming on board. And many of us, um, including most of PDS today, are still working remotely. And the payers also have their staff working remotely. So all of these changes, um, coupled with the changes that CMS has made, have had a direct impact because it's getting harder to have the right information and ensure that we're getting our claims paid and pushed through appropriately. The PDS solution brings three key areas for analytics, visual dashboards, cubes, and reports. You know, for those who are PDS customers, first off, thanks for being a customer, and you're probably familiar with cubes and reports. But when we talk about different types of analytics, right, we'd like to to keep in mind or perspective, there's really two main goals as you're working in your organization. Are we trying to gain insight? Are we trying to understand the denial problems? What are the challenges? Where are we seeing issues? Specifically, you know, is it a particular set of codes, a particular payer? And so using analytics where we're really trying to understand or gain insight is usually cubes and reports where we can slice and dice through data, we can drill down. And ultimately, what we're trying to do is understand what's going on, how have things changed, where are we seeing challenges that maybe we didn't beforehand? 
The second area where, you know, we typically would then apply analytics is about driving change. Are we trying to communicate with leadership where we have a problem? Have we decided we can't afford denial rates that run, you know, 14, 15, 18%, and therefore we're going to really focus leadership and management to driving change within the organization? Let's talk about the most common denials. Yeah, so in general, I don't think the types of denials that organizations are seeing have really changed so much as making sure that we aren't getting denied, but things like getting the right patient information uh, or having missing patient information within our claims. Obviously, um, duplicate claims, if we've submitted the claim twice potentially or not correct or rectified the, the denial issue when we did a resubmission can be a big issue. And then payers not covering services. You know, one area CMS added telehealth visits, but some of the other payers didn't add and not all of them have, you know, appropriately changed or increased reimbursement around those services. And then, of course, because some of the delays we had with staffing and changes and just efficiency, can we get, uh, we might have had some claims that we missed that maybe didn't get paid on time or submitted on time and therefore we had to write off. If we take a look at what actually comes back from the payers in denials, what I call, you know, the detail, and you sort of focus in on all the different denials that might have been posted in a particular month, you tend to see something that looks like this. There's a denial reason code, and then you get some sort of cryptic description. Not really useful when you're trying to do analysis of what's going on because you have lots and lots and lots of these different different codes. And even some of them are just informational. They're not very useful. Um, and they didn't deny the claim, but they still put a denial reason on. So the first thing that we do in PDS Analytics to make our solution more powerful and make it easier for our users is we take all those denials and we, we create different categories for reporting, specifically to make it easier to understand and manage what's going on with this sort of whole bucket of denials. So we start sorting and filtering the denials into things like coordination of benefits, eligibility, documentation, areas that we can then categorize and group the denials. The second thing that we want to do is which denials can we as an organization have a high impact on and which ones potentially may be more low impact where there's, there may be less we can do about getting a denial on that. The other thing, of course, we want to do is we want to remove the informational denials that make a lot of noise in the data and at least for analysis purposes, um, they're still available in the PDS solution, but you really don't need them for what I'm going to show you coming up here. One of the other things is certain things like non-covered service can become really important because although Medicare might have started covering a particular service or changed their reimbursement on something, not all the payers have followed um, in suit. And so even some of the more low-impact denials can, can really be challenging to your organization today given all the changes we've seen in, in, since January. And this slide really provides a little more detail on the high versus low impact categories. Yeah. Now, the ability to categorize data, look at the data, and decide what we're going to do with the data um, is, you know, client specific. It can be tuned to your organization, how you manage, how your process teams are set up. But let's go ahead and take a look at some now, some basic denial data that we have, um, given we've now categorized our different um, denials and the groupings. And so here's a web-based visualization. It is fully interactive. So if I were to click on a particular uh, department or division, you can see the data is changing. We can get a quick feel for the denial rates. We can see that, you know, in medicine here, we've got a lot of high-impact denials. We can see they're focused around registration and coding as two of the most likely areas. And we can even just point and even start to see which payers or payer categories we're seeing those in. So all of the data within the screen is categorized. And the idea here is now we've got a simple way to start to categorize the denials as we start to look at them visually because to just run a long list with all those little tiny codes really, really isn't useful, you know, at least not from management perspective. Let's look at another dashboard. Um, this is the PDS denial infographic from the PDS dashboard library. So um, one of the things that we do for our customers is we have a number of different visualization dashboards that can be used with our tools. And this is a, a, a good starting place, at least to understand what's going on at a high level. And we've created three different categories within the report. What's our denial volume? What are we seeing for denied charges? 
over the last six months? Or what percentage of, you know, denials are occurring on specific procedures? And of course, we can also measure the clean claim rate. And we'll talk more about how we can get a true picture of the denial rate and the clean claim rate. We've got a very simple graph here. We can see that in most months, we're still well above our target of 10% in this example. In the second category, we're really focused on what cost are the denials and what are the things that we could potentially prevent. So those sort of high impactful denials, we can see in this sample here, you know, we've got quite a bit of uh, denied charges that are impactful. We can even assign costs to reworking those denials. What's the cost to our organization to rework those denials and what's the average time? We've got a third area here that says registration denials versus charge entry. We can see we've got sort of two key areas that jump right out. But what we really want to get into is things like denial recovery. You can see we have a solution here, but I'd like to explain how the PDS tool makes it easier to understand, are we getting paid after we have a denial? And what, what does that look like? So in order to do that, I'm going to go back to a, a much simpler illustration, and we'll use a very simple example to understand the PDS staging in the PDS product here. So if we look at posted, let's just assume we had 10 claims that were billed out. We got reimbursed on seven. We got denied on three. If we do the same thing for February and March, it's fairly easy to calculate that our denial rate in January was 30%, February it went to 50%, and in March it went to 60%. So it's clear that the number of denials are climbing. Yeah, I, I don't think you can really miss that in our simple yeah. example. Now, we've purposely, for illustrative purposes here, we made exactly 10 um, claims in each month being posted, and that's the key. We're looking at when things happen by posting date. To really understand what's going on in an organization from a management perspective, though, we're going to turn around and we're going to do what's called a matched payment denials. So we're going to move everything that came in in March, but we're going to put it back to the month that it actually billed out. And this is how we're matching. So we're matching the denials back to the bill date. We're matching the payments back to the bill date. And so as we start to fill in the puzzle, which includes filling in other months, and if you notice in March, we may not get payments or denials until April or May, you know, given how long it takes for the, the payers to either reimburse or deny a claim. So when we use a matched denial rate, which is all calculated by PDS restaging that denial data, we now see instead that we have a 60% matched denial rate in January, 40% uh, in February, and a 30% in March, which is the exact opposite of what we just looked at when we looked at the posted denial rate. I'm seeing two very different measurements of denials. Um, which one is better? Well, the, the simple answer is you really need both, right? Because if we're going to look at things that got denied in March, we've got to work those and, and try to get them recovered. So we need to know what's going on by posting date because that would give us our working challenge of which claims are denied that we need to rework, which claims are sitting in the AR that we need to understand or aren't going to get paid if we don't correct them. But if we want to look at any kind of trends or management perspective, we really need to understand what's going on from a matched perspective. And as you'll see in just a minute, how that's going to impact some of the more advanced metrics that we can calculate. So here's a visual dashboard that illustrates the point I just made. Here are our charges by billing period. And I want you to notice we also had charge variation by month, which we didn't have in the simple example I showed. The second thing, though, is if the claim, just like I showed you, posted or denied in February or March, it's going to take February or March's denial and put it back against January because that's when it originally billed out. This allows us to do what is a true matched denial rate. And you'll notice in June here, where we haven't collected anything past that, our denial rate's very low because as the denials come in in July and August, it's going to raise those percentages. So typically, you're going to need to look back at least probably 60 to 90 days before you can get a more accurate picture of what's going on with your denials. So here, we can very specifically answer the question. We billed $6.4 million in January. As of June, 986000 was denied, which is 15.4% of the charges. And conversely, we had an 84.6% clean claim rate meaning that these claims went through without a denial. So that's where we really want to start. Now, what we really want to do, though, is to go beyond that and understand 
how much of the 986000 that was denied of January's build charges has been paid. Right? And you'll see it right in my visual dashboard here, but let's talk a little bit further about that. So if we, again, take the same sort of simple calculation and we look at then all the denied claims, because we categorize them, we understand what period they were denied in, we can then match the payment, which might have come in after the denial, almost always, right? In denial, like you got a claim that was billed in January, might have been not denied in February, and then got paid in March or April. So by doing that, we can then categorize the payments back to that January period, like you saw on the dashboard, and that allows us then to measure the denial recovery rate or the reimbursement after denial rate. Ultimately, then, we can also recalculate. If we know January's denial rate was 12%, we can then say, but we recovered 3%. That means our effective net denial rate for January you know, was really only um, 9%, not 12%. So it gives us the ability, then, to really understand where we've had denials. Are we recovering? So let's look at some um, visual dashboards that show denial recovery. So now we start to put everything that we've just shared with you together here. So this is a, a, a little more detail, but here you can see we have our different uh, departments in the screen or divisions. And then here we have some of those actually down at the denial code level. You'll see here's our created high impact, low impact calculation. These are the denied charges for those top denials. And then here are the payments that have been recovered. And we can actually see then the payment rate upon appeal. So we can start to understand that on this no coverage on date of service, we've actually recovered 19.7% of the denied charges year to date. Right? We can look at it, of course, by payer. And we even have the ability to look at different areas, like how long is it taking to get paid? Or how long from when we billed did we get denied? And then how long from when we denied did we get paid or zero balanced out the claim? If we look a little further, though, and we might use different reports for different perspectives and different leadership or management in the organization, here's a much simpler view of just what are our denied charges and are we recovering payments. But if we really want to dig deeper through the PDS tools, I mentioned we have cubes and we have reports. And so right through the tools, I can slice and dice from a visual dashboard into an analytics cube. With the analytics cube, I can drag, drop, filter. I could bring in my different denial categories or look at things by payer, even by provider. I can take any category on the left side of the screen and add it to my report. And then ultimately, we can even drill all the way down to the detail behind the cube. So our analytics is really useful as we're exploring challenges, trying to understand problems, or really understand what's really going on behind the data. And as you can see, I went from visual dashboard to cube to detail. And here I am actually looking, you know, line by line at the patient, at the different procedure category. I could drag in the procedures here right on the screen. You can see what the denial code was. And we can even so go so far as to see, did we ever get payment or did we write off the claim in a much more detailed fashion. So let's talk about understanding the physician's impact on denials. Right. So because our data sets are relational, and we can really build dashboards to express different reports or pictures of the data to communicate effectively. We can build out reports that have physicians in. We can see, again, we're looking at here's our denial rate across our various divisions. If I click on endocrinology, which seems to have the highest denial rate, right away we can see you know there's three, four physicians that account for more than 50% of the denials. We can also then even break down, you know, what are sort of physician-related denials or physician-controllable denials, like things like documentation, credentialing, or medical necessity. And so through the analytics, we can start to see where we either want to work with the physicians or, the, or their teams to support trying to eliminate some of these causes. To go a little further, if we're using our analytics to do things like our web-based productivity dashboards for our physicians or physician compensation reporting, we can even then add in those metrics if we want to, you know, as part of an initiative to try to drive change in our organization where a physician really can't miss, you know, we've got some issues here that you potentially could control. And we can even, you know, make it red, yellow, green. How are you doing on hitting the 
stated threshold, we want you to be under 5% for physician-related denials. So just another way that we can help focus and um, physicians to um, engage them. As for another perspective, um, let's look at analyzing payers. Yeah, so we can do exactly the same kind of approach we did with physicians. Our tools are fully relational here. We know physicians, and we certainly know where the payers are. So in this example here, I could see, you know, challenges with hematology or cardiology. We can see the months that we had higher spikes. We can see we've got a lot of denials going on in registration. So by clicking on registration, it filtered right through. We can see we've got a problem with our Anthem, maybe some of our commercial carriers. And we can see that registration denials is a real issue in infectious disease. So we may want to tackle this sort of in two different areas. Do we have a, a problem with registration or potentially is there a problem with the payer that maybe we need to get our payer representative involved? Maybe we're doing all the right things and it's a problem on the payer's side. This dashboard has a unique capability also to look at the recovery rate of the different payers. So if I highlight or filter right here on the bottom of the screen here, what you're seeing here is these are the percentage of recovery by particular payers. And we can see when we get denied by any of these payers, we're seeing a fairly high 70%, 50%, 54% recovery rate on denials. Now, those payers aren't doing very much volume. The payers that I'd be most concerned about is over here, where we're seeing, in this case, you know, Anthem and some of the other payers here, our commercial payers, we have a lot of denied charges, but our recovery rate is less than 10%. Now, hopefully, my denial data here is not reflective of what's going on in your organization, but it gives you a very good feel for how we can look and analyze, you know, the payers as well as some of the different areas that we're working in. Now, in addition to understanding what the cost or the losses are for denials, we can look at it from a positive perspective and say, how do we drive change, right? We talked about using analytics for change. And one of the other ways that we can do that is to design opportunity dashboards. And this is one of the PDS opportunity dashboards. It's also found in the PDS dashboard library, where we can look at a particular division and all the different bill areas that are associated with that division. And we can measure the denial counts, the denied charges. We can kind of compare them all to the cardiology division, which is running a 13.6% denial rate. We could very quickly see that in certain areas we have 17.4, 18.4. So we've got a few areas where the, you know, their denial rate is significantly above our divisional denial rate. We can also then measure the payment after denial and see that cardiology, you know, sadly is only recovering 28% of the, the reimbursement when they get a denied claim versus 54% when the claim is clean. So as we then start to compare the activity in the comparison, we can do what if analysis, right? So we can look at it from the positive and say, what if we change as opposed to, oh, we lost. What if we change? Well, if we could just get a 5% reduction in the denial rate across the board, because we've assigned a cost to rework the claim, right? we can start to estimate what the recovery would be. Or if we could move all those divisions that are below our department rate here at 13.6%, if we can move them down so they have lower denial rates, you could see there's dollars associated there. We could do the same thing by looking at the reimbursement and the recovery of reimbursement. And if we can drive any of the outliers to better performance, you can see there's some fairly significant dollars. And, and I will say that our example here on the screen is fairly low to what we typically see when we look at organizations. Through the web analytics, we have the same capability, which is we can look even down at the procedure level. Now, this is one of the more advanced dashboards that I'm going to show here today. And what you're seeing now is we're actually looking at the procedures, the volume of procedures. Okay, And if we have integrated the contract profiles, which you can do in the PDS tool sets, we can start to predict how many dollars are either at risk because they're active denials sitting in the AR, or if we were to click and say, are they fully adjudicated, we can see how many dollars are lost, right? So we can actually use our analytics to predict and then focus where are the high volume procedures. If we click on gastroenterology, which is running some fairly high denied charges, right? We can start to see what procedures and what the you know potential loss or at risk is if we don't recover. And to go a little further, we can even start to see which procedures are typically recovered 
as our denials and which procedures that we're doing quite a few of that we may never get recoveries on, right? So if we can move any of these high volume procedures that rarely recover up, that can turn into significant dollars for our organization. So we've shown a number, <clears throat> excuse me, of different dashboards and reports. What's the most effective for managing denials? Well, the right answer is it really depends on what we're trying to accomplish, right? So we could be looking at gaining insight, you know, to understand the problems, right? And whether it's cubes or visual dashboards, where are we seeing challenges? And denials is kind of one of those things, you know, I, I like to call it like whack-a-mole, right? Because today we have a problem with registration. We go and we fix that, and that one goes away, and then something else will pop up, a different payer, a different procedure, right? So it's not just about recovering them, because if we're recovering them or working on the, the posted denials, we may be missing the fact that we could be preventing them by addressing the issues up front and getting ahead of them, right? So really the right answer is are we trying to deny to to fix and understand what's going on in the organization and potentially highlight that we have to change. Maybe we need to change how we allocate resources. Are we trying to drive change where we've acknowledged and we're, we're focused on better outcomes and we want to make sure that everybody who's part of that understands and has the right information they need? Okay. Just a couple other advanced things that I want to share that can be done with the PDS tools. I touched on a few of these, but these are kind of what I'd call the more advanced metrics, right? Understanding the value of delayed claim payments, which, which goes back to your cash flow, right? So if you normally would get paid in 28 days and then because of denials, those payments drag out to 60 or 70 days, you can actually forecast your cash flow by reducing the lag time on, on your payments. Uh, we talked and I showed you a little bit about procedure appeal efficiency, but being able to understand what procedures and what payers are never paying you allows you to understand either we have a payer issue, we might want to bring, bring that up, or we may want to you know, dramatically look at where we have high volume procedures and we're spending money. If we really can't recover them, maybe we should be writing them off. The cost to recover may be more than the cost of recovery. And of course, being able to value denials not recovered, and I've showed a couple different examples, but being able to understand either, you know, what are the costs here, and then, or what are the denied balances that are sitting in open air that's at risk, as I showed you through that visual example, right? Another key area, especially today, is understanding what denied balances, maybe, you know, non-covered services got shifted over to patient responsibility, and because of COVID and some of the changes, uh, you know, do we even want to go after patients or understand what that shift is and has it dramatically changed? And of course, real key is if you're seeing denials from a particular payer or payer is being able to go to contracting and saying, you know, you've been denying these services and you're telling me they're not, you know, usual or customary or reasonable or even our rates may be unreasonable and uh, all the other payers in our market are not denying them. You know, we have a 5% denial rate um, on these payers, uh, and yet you're at 15 for no good reason, you know, and really having some good dialogues to try to negotiate or make changes. And of course, the last thing is what we talked about, that effective net denial rate. So we're billing charges in January, but understanding our denial rate is 15%, but our effective net denial rate is really only 11, could be a real compliment to the back to say, yeah, we are recovering. And then how do we reduce the denial rate and ultimately ensure we're getting paid on the procedures we're getting paid on? And one of the biggest value points to the PDS solution um, is that everything you've seen can be tuned or customized to your standards, uh, your definitions, and your metrics. This concludes our webinar. Thank you, everyone, for joining and hope you have a great day. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.